Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing a $300 powerful gaming PC build. It'll be able to run modern games at medium to low settings and older games like Skyrim and Minecraft at ultra settings. Our CPU is the Intel Pentium G3258. It's got two cores, it runs at the fast speed of 3.2 gigahertz. And I like to use this CPU for my budget gaming PC builds because it is a $60 beast. It's got a great benchmark score and it's actually considered a high-end CPU. So it definitely won't be bottlenecking the system. And if you don't know, bottlenecking is essentially getting unbalanced parts. For example, if you pair a high-end GPU with a cheap CPU, that CPU won't let your GPU run at its fullest potential. It's like running with a little kid. You can only go as fast as a little kid goes. That's why it's important to use balanced parts. Now our motherboard is the MSI H81M E33. It's a good cheap motherboard. It supports a RAM speed of up to 1600. It has two USB 3.0 ports and it's cheap and that's what we need for this build. So we can get a better GPU. We're going to be using this Corsair 4GB memory stick. Now we can only afford 4GB in our budget. And though this RAM stick only has a frequency of 1333, it has low latency and that makes up for it. And if you don't know, latency is the delay time. You want low delay time so your RAM runs faster. Also, high frequency is sort of a gimmick because a lot of RAMs with high frequency also have high latency. And as you can see, those two things sort of cancel out giving you average speeded RAM. All in all, this is good RAM because it runs at a decent speed. It's got 4.5 stars on Amazon and a 4x score on Newegg, and it's cheap. Our GPU is the PowerColor AX6970. It has a 4x score on Newegg, uses the Radeon HD6970, which is a great chipset. Now, it's an old GPU, but it's a good GPU. Like our CPU, it's got a great benchmark score, and it's considered a high-end GPU. And it's actually considered the best value video card on videocardbenchmark.net. And finally, it has 2GB of DDDR5 memory and it runs at a core clock speed of 880 MHz. For 100 bucks, you can't go wrong with this GPU. The CPU and the GPU are balanced and will work well together. We are going to be using a really cheap Seagate hard drive. It runs at a speed of 7000 RPM, which is great. It's only 160 gigs and it's 25 bucks and that's gonna work well for our budget. You will probably need to upgrade the hard drive in the future because it's only 160 gigs, but we needed a cheap hard drive for the system so we had to make the sacrifice. The case that we're gonna be using is the Thermaltake VL8001W2Z. I basically just tried to find the cheapest case I could get that looked the nicest and had the best airflow and was not disappointed because this one does look really nice and comes with an extra fan. So definitely a good case for $23. Now we've got a surprisingly good PSU for our build. It's the XFX P1550SXXB9. It's 550 watts, it's 80 plus bronze certified. And for 25 bucks, that's really hard to find. It is a very popular PSU. It's got a 4X score on Newegg. It will be a great PSU for this build. Now the total comes to $314. And the GPU is not going to be listed in the PC Part Picker website because I couldn't find it on the PC Part Picker website. Instead, I'll post a separate link in the description for the GPU. And lastly, this is a great balance system that will get you the highest FPS for the lowest price. If you want to see one of my older videos, you can click one of the links on the screen. You can subscribe if you want to. And most importantly, thanks for watching.